I am picking up the signature of an important item belonging to my people. I will share its location. Okay. Wow, instantly good timing. And it's over by the snow fox. Because of course it is. Because of course it is. Well, we'll go after that later, uh, Alan. Wow, he interrupted me like right as I was about to start the episode. Which, uh, amazing timing if I'm being honest. Especially because I left the game on idle while I walked away for like 20 minutes. It's random that he just decided to do that now. Okay, what is up my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming back to more Subnautica Below Zero. Last episode, we finally left the Arctic Spires. We left our snow fox behind. I'm going to turn off all of my thumper... Uh, blue, uh, things because I am never going to go back and get those suckers. They are stranded out there forever and they're probably going to be dead by the time we get back there anyway. So, we've got a lot on the docket today. The first of which is actually to make a reinforced dive suit. So we'll have this to protect us while we head out. It's going to be nice, uh, a nice improvement on our situation. So let's uh, equip all of that. We'll put all of the cold suit resistance stuff in our sea truck really quickly so we can have access to that later that can go in one of the storage modules so there's a bunch of stuff now that we're going to need to start making before we go any further in this game the first of which is a prawn suit but that's not the only thing i also need to make myself a couple of modules but well, particularly one module for my sea truck now we saw what we need to make the prawn suit in the last episode but let's go over this other module that i think we have i know we have the aquarium and storage modules unlock and then i want to say we have if i can be a hundred percent here i want to say we have the fabricator module yes but we need lead for that so we're going to be making play steel ingots we're going to be making computer chips all sorts of things. We also need to make enamel gel, which I don't think is going to be a really, uh, uh, or enameled glass, excuse me, which I don't think is going to be a huge issue, um, in particular, but we need to kind of get all of our bearings together. So I need a lot of lead. That is my biggest issue again, as we've run into many, many times in this game. So I've got food. I've got water on me. I'm going to put all of these freaking first aid kits just away. I, I really don't need them at all so let's do that and then what we're gonna do is I am going to head out and we're, we're gonna try to gather like at least like six or seven lead possibly even a whole truck full of lead and to do this I'm going to be heading into an area that I have not yet been to and getting there is gonna be tricky let's just say that getting there is going to be tricky but we're going to do our best here. So, remember the purple vents? Remember that gloriously glowing purple and yellow area where there's lots of geysers and there's lots of sulfur around and crash fish and there's cryptosuchuses? Well, there's a second section to the purple vents. And you have to approach it with extreme caution. And you have to do that because floating directly above the uh that section that we want to go into is the chelicerate the chelicerate that i believe i think we've spotted that one but we haven't at been attacked by it yet and instead of the well have we been attacked by it i can't remember there was we got attacked by a chelicerate i thought it was the other one over the crater but maybe i'm crazy Regardless, this is just the... This isn't the purple vents, though. We're not in that area just yet. I think I'm also going, like, completely the wrong way. So I'm going to go down this direction. Here we go. This is the purple vents. Okay, so once we get in this area, it's going to light up a little bit more. We need to find a drop-off area. The way you're supposed to approach this is very simple, actually. You want to stay close to the vents, and then you're going to find a spot that where it sort of drops off like this. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kind of turn around and go down. Again, watch for the chelicerate. It can just lunge at you at any second, and it doesn't really... You don't have to be all that close to it for it to see you. But once we get about to where... Okay, that's the spot, I think. No, is that the spot? No, I think it's by the Mercury or something like that. Anyways... Oh, no, this is the spot. We're literally in it right now. Okay, so the Chelicerate is directly in front of us. Like, you can't see it, but it is. Trust me. And we need to go down. If we're attacked, we're attacked, and I don't care too much. I would rather us not be attacked, but it's probably going to happen. 
So, okay. So see where it drops off here? This is the spot. Where are you at? I know you're around here somewhere. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. Go down, go down, go down. Go down, go down, go down. Down, 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 down. Okay, I think we're out of its range now. So, as soon as we get down here, there are, oops, uh, lots of like modules and things like that that we can scan. And I have the reinforced dive suit for a reason, just in case the thing attacks me. Okay, docking module fragment. This right here is a module that we can get to actually attach the prawn suit to the sea truck. And I want this before we actually build the prawn suit, if possible. But like I said, I'm also looking for lead. Now, that looks like a piece of the ship, but I can't get to it. Or can I? Hold on. Do I want to get to it? I don't know if I do. Well, I'm going to go down deeper because, yes, this place goes even further. We can only go so far, though, because this is actually what leads to the most dangerous biome in the game, which is not known as the Deep Purple Vents, but rather the Crystal Caves. And you'll no ow, you'll notice as we go further down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, too far, too far, too far, too far, too far. Yeah, we got to be careful. We got to be careful. We can venture out beyond this point, but our sea truck can't. So we're down pretty low, which is good. Now we are going to start doing some looking around for stuff. We're, this part of the map is mostly harmless. There's not really anything down here. The Chilisrit should be way up top, uh, closer to the surface, so you shouldn't have to worry about that down here. And as long as you don't venture into the Crystal Caves itself, you should be fine. You should be absolutely fine. Now, there are things like lithium around here, but I can't remember if there is a way of getting lead down here either. Watch out for the geysers, though. They can nick you a little bit, which is a bit of a problem. Okay, that is the crystal caves down there, which is where I don't want to go. Because that... Oh! Okay, that scared me. Yeah, the crystal caves... Uh, Crystal Caves is not a happy place. Not a happy place for happy people and happy fun times. But it is a place we're going to have to go down to at some point. It is... Think of think of the Crystal Caves as kind of like the Lost River in the first game. Except not near as expansive, not near as... Actually, no. It's That's not even the apt uh, description, is it? It's more like the, uh, the Lava Zone. Provide useful information. Processing. Scan it. Fossil excavator. Okay, interesting. Based on analysis, it is speculated that this artifact is an archaeological tool for finding and excavating fossil remnants. The main body of the equipment is, ho is housed between two glide rails. The excavator emits a sonar pulse that gathers data on the ground beneath it. When it bounces back with a possible fossilized object, it begins the excavation process. A set of layers emit from the arms... Uh, lasers, excuse me, emit from the arms and slowly re uh, removes micro layers of material. Once the fossil is revealed, the same carefully calibrated lasers are utilized to break loose materials while preserving the fossil underneath. Fossils can be analyzed using carbon dating and, another, and other methods by... Un <coughs> ah! I can't read, apparently. To understand what the environmental makeup might have been millions of years ago, which can be compared to current data to look for trends. Interesting. Not what I'm looking for, though. It's an artifact. I mean, that's cool and all, but... I am looking for module pieces. Also, can I go in here? It sure looks like I can. Oh, no, it's just an ion cube. Okay, well, I'll take it. Free ion cube. Haven't been able to put those to use yet, but an ion cube's an ion cube. Come on, there's got to be... I need one more docking module, though, somewhere. It's got to be around here somewhere. Obviously, I don't have all the time in the world to look, but... If I absolutely have to go down into the Crystal Caves for a minute, I will. So we can at least see it, because I know there are boundaries to the cave. There is an area. Gotta be uh, careful with that vent right there. That one can actually hurt you from far away. Um, I know there's like a boundary where it's like, okay, once you go past this point, you're going to get in trouble. But at least in the initial area you, you swim into, you're fine. So... What is that down here? I thought something was glowing, but probably should actually grab the gel sacks. Because um, I am actually, I think I'm a little short on these at the moment. So we'll take those. Just a few, just a few. And I'm going to go back and catch some air. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. And then I think 
How do humans cope with the loss of memories? Like forgetting someone's birthday? I don't know, it just happens. When you die, some quantity of knowledge is lost forever to the next generation. Isn't that... I'm warning you, if you call humanity inefficient one more time, I will swim us both into the mouth of the Leviathan. Is that sarcasm? I am still having trouble differentiating. How inefficient? Efficiency aside, does the loss of knowledge not create complications? Well, on a personal level, losing someone can be traumatic. But it's harder to process the idea of generational knowledge. Humans aren't networked, so we can't even be aware of what we're losing moment by moment. We try to learn from history. Maybe it's not ideal, but it's what we have. What happens when you no longer have the memories of others to combine with your own? You make your own memories and interpretations. You have to experience life as an autonomous being. Discover yourself. That idea is foreign to me. All right, well, are you done, Alan? Are you done? Okay. This is the Crystal Caves, everybody, in case that wasn't immediately obvious. There's crystal in here, and it's a cave. Very obvious. Now, we can venture down to a certain point. And torpedo arm. I don't even know why I'm scanning this. It's not like I'm ever going to use it. But uh, we can venture down to a certain point before we start to get into some huge trouble here. And obviously, I can't stay down here for too long because my only means of air is my sea truck. So I'm going to have to venture back to that at some point. But so far, we're safe. So far, we are okay. Just going to keep going around. And you noticed I picked up some kyanite, which was an end game material in the last game. And that is absolutely true in this one as well. And if I can find one more piece of kyanite, that would be awesome. But I don't think that's going to be so ooh, ooh, easy. Okay. Let's take this thing. Oh, we got a couple pieces. Okay, let's take it. We got to be really careful, though, because we are all right on the precipice. Like, right on the precipice. Also, there is Galena here, which is very, very nice. I might need to do something about that. Um, perhaps I can find more? I just gotta be so careful. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, yeah, well, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hang back. We're gonna hang back. There is, so by far the most deadly and, uh, damaging creature in the entire game. Even more than the Ice Worm, I would say. Like, it's not a one-hit kill like the Ice Worm, but it's certainly more frightening than the Ice Worm is that thing way the heck over there. And I'm going to try to keep my distance from it. And, uh, oh, shoot. Okay, okay, okay. I think we've played with fire too much here. All right, I'm going up. I'm going up. I've also only got 60 seconds left, so. I did want to keep looking around. I'm going to try to get, I think I might come back down here one more time, grab some Galena if I can. Galena outcrops, because like I said, I need lead. But that floating blue thing off in the distance, that is what we don't want to go anywhere near. And this place is infested with those things. I seriously mean infested. Infested. They are everywhere, and it's very frustrating going through that area if you are not adequately prepared and you don't have the prop. Obviously, you need a depth module for one, but there is one other thing you're going to want for your sea truck to make sure that you don't get absolutely destroyed down there because they can hurt you pretty good. Okay. Let's see. All right. I think that's enough. I want to drop a couple things off in here put that kyanite away into safety because I am definitely going to need that for the depth module that I need to craft for my sea truck let's keep moving I probably should have grabbed some batteries at the base and I just realized that I didn't that's gonna explode yep it's okay We're, we'll be fine we'll just take one more trip down there just one out that one was ready to pop and it did so right next to me and yes, you'll also notice there are some, like, new fish around here as well. But as long as we stay outside of the range of the big glowy guy off in the distance, we should be fine. We just gotta stay... keep our distance here. He is... I, and I feel like if I go too close... Okay, there is a propulsion arm. It's not like I need that, though. I don't need the propulsion cannon arm. I just need the frickin'... There we go, kyanite. Okay, I now have enough, I think. Um, I just need the grapple arm and the drill arm, and I'm set for life on the prawn suit. I never need anything else. Why would you give something that's invincible uh, 
ways to defend itself. I feel like that's a little bit almost overkill. All right, all right, all right. But I am going to be a little daring here. Keep an eye ahead. There. Okay, we got the propulsion cannon, which is, I mean, that's great and all. It's not like I'm going to use it, but... All right, let's keep looking for Galena now, which there, I think, is a lot. I'm going to keep looking that way, too, just in case one of them decides to sneak up on me. Okay. I don't have a ton of time down here. I think I'll book it in, like, 60 seconds. But it doesn't help to look, and all the Galena, obviously is on the walls. Let's go up a ways. Come on. Great place to find this stuff. Because we've pretty much exhausted all we could in the Twisty Bridges area. Could the music be any more ominous? I actually really do like uh, Subnautica Below Zero soundtrack. Not... I don't... Okay. Okay, okay, that's terrifying. Uh, I don't know if I like it as much as the first games, but I do like it quite a bit, and I do think that it gets a little bit too much criticism. I think they actually did a really good job with this one, and it's got some pretty memorable tracks. I'm a huge fan of the song that plays in the Twisty Bridges uh, sa uh, Safe Shallows Kelp Forest area in this game. I actually like that one more than the one you get in... That, or then at least some of the Subnautica songs, the original ones, but not all of them. There's a couple that are better, I think. All right, let's get out of here. I actually am pushing it now. Go, go, go. 45 seconds. I lost track of time. Holy crap. I mean, well, I think we'll be fine, but because it only takes us, I think, what, 30 seconds to get back there? Pretty sure. As long as I don't get absolutely, like, toasted by this geyser or something, I should be okay. Morning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. I didn't really see a whole lot more in the way of Galena outcrops over there either, which is a little bit of an issue. So, let's go this way. I'm sure we've got it. I've still got 50% on this thing. I'm probably fine. We got, what, a total of three lead, I think, is what it was? Yeah, that's not enough, though. That's not as much as I would like. Alright, hold on. Actually, maybe... Let me try something here. I'm going to try to bring my sea truck around really carefully, but we're going to kind of stick to the ceiling here. I'm going to bring my sea truck around so that I'm as close to the entrance as possible. Okay, that's, that's pushing it right there. Let's try this one more time. One more time. One last excursion for lead, and then we'll call this an episode. And then we'll worry about actually building some of this stuff in the next episode. Maybe if I can grab a couple. I mean, I, I think I need like 9 or 10 lead. So I might have to do a little bit off screen. Which is okay. But... I just gotta be super careful here. Okay, let's check this side more. I know it's a little closer to his spawn point. But it just feels a bit more promising. This is actually one time where it would be nice to have a, a resource detector to actually guide me around. I probably should make one of those at some point. We are a little late, though. If I'm being honest. Okay. I am not seeing any... Galena outcrops at all. And that feels like it's pushing it too much. Hmm. Oh, there we go. There's one. I found one. Okay, we actually got some lead out of that. So not a total loss. It's good. We'll keep searching around. We are very much trapped on the outskirts out here. It is not worth it to go any further. What's up, dude? I'm gonna try to avoid you as well. Oh, there is actually Argentite out here? That's interesting. Let's see. It doesn't help, uh, hurt to get some titanium right now, too, because we're gonna need it for all those ingots. Come on. There's gotta be... Oh, there's another one. Give me that. No, 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 no. Not what I wanted. 
Not what I wanted. Let's see. More up and down. That looks like more lithium. You're never going to find Galena outcrops on the ground. That's the issue. They're always up on the walls. Or up a little higher. There! There is the thing. That is the thing. Can you see it more clearly now? We want to avoid that at all costs. Ugh. Hate those things. Alright, well, I'm just going to grab a little bit of lithium on the way out. Um, bit of that, too, I guess. I've got time to get back. So we'll just grab a few of these things on the way out. A little bit of assorted goodies and knickknacks. That will do me good. And uh, then we can call it here. Guys, thank you all so very much for watching this episode of Subnautica Below Zero. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. In the next episode, we are going to get to actually putting our prawn suit together. I also still need to get myself a docking module uh, to actually finish that construction. So I'm going to work on that in the next episode as well. We're going to build the fabricator module, the docking module, attach into our sea truck, and get ourselves, obviously, on top of all of that, the prawn suit. It's going to be... A very productive episode, I hope. I hope we have enough to actually make it all happen. So, guys, thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.